So Philip Schofield admits he lies. ITV lie. The place is a den of iniquity. Wow, powerful words there by Eamon Holmes. A damning indictment. An absolute den of iniquity. A den of iniquity. Somewhat hyperbolic, perhaps. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying he's using emotive language. Den of iniquity. Thinking immediately a den. A place where at best timid woodland critters hang out like foxes and badgers. Foxes are crafty. Badgers, if you back them into a corner, they get a bit... Argh! You know, den could also be a lair, a delinquent's rendezvous in order to hash out their plans for their latest criminal escapade. While it may be accurate, let's not just assume that ITV is a den of some sort. An absolute den of iniquity. Okay, so those of you who are new to this channel, uh, I think you need to know, ask some of the subscribers, the long-term subscribers in the comments or whatever, I don't know what you sick people do. However you go about it, anyone you ask will tell you that Daniel Boland, he has a strict moral code. Now, I may not be the most thorough researcher on YouTube. I don't always get it right. Sure, I make some snap judgments about people based on the words they use and the intonation. Sometimes I remember stuff that contradicts what they're saying. However, I am a firm believer in equality. I don't care if you're black, white, gay, straight, man, woman, old, young, rich, poor. If you're an asshole, I'm coming for you. Bit like Philip Schofield. That was low-hanging fruit. Kind of low-hanging fruit that an ITV presenter would try to f**k. You can do better than that. There's a couple of things I'd like to say. First of all, the National Television Awards, there is this event which you've got to understand this morning uh, under the guise of Philip and Holly is a very false existent. Mm. F-A-F. I won't tell you what those ignitions st <laughs> initials stand for. <laughs> We're after the watershed. But, I can work it out. But the first word is false. <laughs> um, and the second word is as. False as. How dare you, Eamon Holmes? Look, Eamon, you can sit there in your ivory tower at GB News and accuse Phil and Holly of committing the most despicable acts of debauchery in their den of iniquity on ITV. But accusing them of being false, what next, Eamon? Are you going to tell us that Gordon the Gopher wasn't a real gopher? Once it's in, I love it. Hey, what? Uh, yeah. What was the... What was I doing with... <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I've never willy wanged since then. <laughs> <laughs> it was spontaneous comedy gold, Eamon Holmes. Jealous much? Also, I don't know what's happening to this guy in this clip. Nothing's that funny. That poor guide dog he's got with him that's gone through years of training to save people in case of anaphylactic shock. They're wagging its tail, it doesn't know what's going on. Poor thing, trying to get the syringe out of its little backpack. <laughs> they are then allowed to turn up the next day advocating the use of drink or any something else, I don't know, and sit on a couch, I am so drunk, I haven't been to bed, or oh, I haven't been to bed either, I'm drunk, whatever, whatever. And yet, <laughs> ITV, this is at a time, with a legacy of Aunt McPartland, lovely fellow, mm. lovely fellow, who was in a driving accident uh, where people were injured and he was under the influence of drink. And yet they can promote that. Ruth and I are prevented Mm. from advertising chocolate in an advert because it is a poisonous uh, product. It would be poisonous to advertise chocolate is poisonous and you're not going to be allowed to do it. Now, I'm going to say something that some of you may not like, but that's the way I roll. I don't bow to the mob, okay? I'm going to put this question to you. Is it possible, is it within the realms of plausibility that Eamon Holmes has an axe to grind with Philip and Holly. The whole country is debating whether or not Philip Schofield is a nonce. But Eamon Holmes here is more concerned about that time they came on to the set with a hangover, yet I can't advertise chocolate because they said it's poisonous. Okay, Eamon, read the room. Nobody cares. These are rules for one and rules for the other. Does that make me bitter? Maybe it does. Maybe it does make me bitter, but... 
Uh-oh, Eamon Holmes has let us into his bitter little psyche. They're all the damn same wake-up people. All these TV presenters are talentless hacks who've shafted their way to the top. Just because we're finally seeing Philip Schofield for who he really is doesn't mean that all of his ex-colleagues that are throwing him under the bus should be your new heroes. And you can thank me in the comments for bringing some nuance into your lives. Thank you, Daniel. I'd never thought about it like that. You're welcome. Right, so I'm driving in. Uh, Philip will be arriving in to appear on the programme today. Why? We can't tell you. We, we can't tell. We host it today. Holly will be coming in as well. You will be hosting bits of the programme, but they have got something to say. I'm thinking, oh, good, hopefully he's going. You know, hurrah. <laughs> I get it that you've all come here to shit on Philip Schofield, and we're getting to that. There's some good parts in this interview. But I must reiterate, is there no end to these people's ambition? How old is Eamon Holmes? 68? I don't know. I'm guessing, and I'm not looking it up. As I said, I do not thoroughly research anything. So 68 years old, or whatever, and he's thinking to himself, God, I hope they get rid of Philip Schofield. Instead of earning 2.9 million a year, I can earn 3.3 million a year. Only I could get rid of that Schofield fella. Could advertise Mars bars. So anyway, he comes into our dressing room and he falls down on his knees. I mean, the acting is amazing. You know, he falls down on his knees crying. <laughs> and I said to him, what's the matter? What's the matter? I'm gay. I'm gay. Now that I can believe. I'm with you 100%, Eamon Holmes. I don't care if you can advertise chocolate or not, but that impression of <laughs> Philip Schofield dropping to his knees. i gay. I can totally believe that. And I walked over and I said, is that all? Well, what is this? What, what is I, th I thought he'd killed a child mm. or something. Mm. Give it time. Is this the tip of the iceberg? Are there more allegations and revelations to come? Or, or as far as you're concerned, is it's it all biggest, out? It's all my out biggest, there. sorriest secret. Do Are you we... feel you were used? Oh boy, were we used? We went to the studio and Miss Holly took over mm with a pre-prepared statement. For Miss Holly, it's supposed to be dyslexic. She read this very, very well. Read this incredibly long statement very, very well. Another controversial take by Eamon there, calling into question Holly Willoughby's dyslexia diagnosis. That Mars bar deal must be pretty damn lucrative. He'll do anything. <laughs> so we get there and Ruth is constantly asked by Emma Gormley, the director of uh, Daytime, and Martin Vizel, the editor of the programme, Right, do you want us to write something for you? Do you want a script? Do you want to say this? Do you want to say, do you, what, what, what are you going to say? What are, you, are you sure? Are you sure about what you're going to say? So we then began to feel there was a certain line being patterned here. We said, no, 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 I know what I'm going to say. Us believing the truth is that Philip uh, is revealing he's gay and coming out. And Ruth Adlibs, without any order cure or anything else, I just decided at this point, Mm, not sure. I'm just beginning to feel bad vibes about this. Aren't I? I'm not saying anything. I don't know, Ruth. I'm worried. I don't like the sound of this. We've got the Mars bar deal, finally. I've been waiting for years on this Mars bar deal. Not about to throw it all away now for some poofter. So I don't say anything in the, the opener. Ruth says what she has to say. Then it goes to those two in their choreographed way. Knowing her faults they are, I'm sure they've rehearsed it for mm. days as to what they were going to say and do and who was going to hug. And Holly was very specific about where she sat, where Philip sat, where Ruth sat, where I sat. It was all choreographed, right? And then we notice the Sun newspaper's here. Mm. So the story was sold to the Sun newspaper. The head of the director of programmes, Kevin Ligo, was there from ITV. The director of daytime, Emma Gormley, was there. Martin Frizzell was there, the editor. The agents, James Grant, YMU, were there um, for all of this. And we began to feel this is not our, our mm. show at all. OK, so we've got to take it with a pinch of salt, because we know that Eamon Holmes is a bitter 68-year-old man. That's a fact. Uh, and he... he well, <sighs> If that's all true, you know, that it's choreographed, that they sold the story before they revealed it to their co-hosts and all that kind of thing, it is very cynical, isn't it? You know, you, you make out that you're crying and this is uh, awful and, oh, poor me, I'm having to come out because I've had to hide who I really am for all these years. And, um, and it turns out it is all just, you know, set up to maximise monetization. 
<sighs> These people make me sick. Philip Schofield was protected. You went. Jeremy Kyle went. Piers Morgan mm -hmm. went. Carol McGiffin went. Mm -hmm. It feels like if anyone questions Carolyn McCall's woke narrative, mm -hmm. they're out. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd say there's absolutely um, no question about that. Um, they like a certain order, even if that order is corrupt. I can understand as a consumer, you might find it annoying that ITV has an agenda, right? And that they get rid of people who don't follow the narrative, like Jeremy Kyle, Jeremy Clarkson, Eamon Holmes, right? But I would say this to you. Nobody's forcing you to watch. Nobody is forcing those presenters to sell their souls to this corporation. It does annoy me a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a little bit is uh, an understatement, right? It annoys me that all of these presenters and comedians and entertainers now are coming out as anti-woke. Why does that annoy me? Is it because I disagree with them? No, not necessarily. But it's, it's funny how that now there's a market for being anti-woke. Now you can go to places like Talk TV and GB News and places like that. You know, oh, Bill Maher set up his podcast. And suddenly they're all anti-woke, right? They're no longer shills for the big left-wing media corporations. Pull the other one. I ain't buying it. That don't impress me much, as Shania would say. Look, Eamon Holmes may be right about everything he's just said, but something just rings false about I couldn't advertise chocolate because Philip Schofield was drunk. Okay, Eamon. Doesn't matter if they're bending the rules or breaking the rules, but as long as they instigate lockdown, mm. then they, it's their way or the highway, but, I mean, none of them are even honest. I mean, McCall never, even though the order came from her to get rid of me mm. uh, through her lackey, Emma Gormley. Sorry, Emma Gormley. Ha! Got he! Ha! You should be able to question the narrative about all things. Which is the job of a journalist. Well, of course it is. Of course it is. You know, they said cigarette smoking was safe. They say yeah. alcohol abuse is safe, and then suddenly it's not mm. safe. Oh dear, no, we'll change your mind on this. Chocolate, for example, especially Mars bars, are perfectly safe. And then there was one other person, of course, who had a lot of influence on Carolyn McCall, a certain Ms. Markle, who yes. didn't like the fact that you had criticised her in the past, didn't like the fact that Piers Morgan <laughs> didn't believe her lies. So she seems to have a lot of influence on to. woke ITV well, now I think too. the way of dealing with Carla McCall and Meghan Markle and whatever is to laugh at them and to laugh at their wokery and just laugh. <laughs> really said, seriously, seriously. So my final analysis, uh, I would say, Eamon Holmes, we largely agree, okay? Um, so you've got a pass for the time being. All right, don't slip up, because I will, I'll be keeping an eye on you. Um, yeah, we largely agree. I just think we need to be, we need to take everything with a pinch of salt. Okay, and that's what we do here on this channel. Uh, just take it with a pinch of salt. I, we have to question Eamon Holmes' motives. All right, that's all. Okay, bear that in mind, people. Bear in mind also that I still don't have my silver plaque here for 100,000 subscribers, so could you please subscribe to the channel, like, leave your comments, do all the things that help with the algorithm, or what the hell, what the hell are we doing here? Okay? Alright, I'll see you in the next one. I don't use condoms!